Today on the bench we have a Yaesu FT-747 and this radio was shipped in from Tom over in Westchester, Ohio and the complaint was no receive on any band so this morning I've been up on the roof repairing a leak due to hurricane conditions and I decided I'd come in here and just give this a once over because it just arrived about an hour ago so I thought I'd just go ahead and look at it right quick and just see what all was going on with it. Um, radio does put out power. It's just that the receive is uh, virtually not there on any band you tune to. So I've got the uh, 8640B connected to it and we're going to check the receiver. I've also got it tied in to our ICO vacuum tube voltmeter since uh, I do not have an external cyanide meter and uh, until I replace the dummy load in the IFR 1200 that cyanide meter does not work until that is done so we'll get right on into it and take a look at it see what we can see have the 8640 dialed in to uh, 14.200 We'll turn it up to about minus 70 dBm. Go to minus 70 dBm. Well, about 73 dBm we should have a single of about S9 on the uh, FT747 according to Yezu specs. Okay, we'll turn the receiver up. Sure enough, we are not getting any tone at all from the uh, single generator. And if we look up at our meter, you see we're at about uh, about 0.1 on the AC volt scale. So no receive whatsoever. I'm going to go up and turn the uh, attenuator up until we start hearing some noise, if we hear some noise. It's about minus 40 dBm we're starting to hear something. And that's at minus 30 dBm. In the uh, S meter. We're going to get the S5 at about minus 10 dBm. And a little over S8. And we're exactly at minus zero dBm or zero dBm. So that's a very, very strong single just to uh, break an S9 on this radio. So the next step is uh, we'll pull the sides off and take a look at it and see what we can find. So to get into the uh, 747, if you notice there's not hardly any screws that you can see but you see that little hole that's a lock and you push that little pin in and you can slide these uh, side rails off so let's go ahead and do that and sometimes they can be a little booger Okay, that's one. And we have both of them off and to remove the uh, top cover it's like a little T-lock right here in the middle and then there's two downward insertion locks that go into it. 
Raise up on the back, get your fingers under it and just flex the top just a little bit. Then you slide it right off. You can see right here is that little T-lock that holds it on. And that's how easy it is to get into a 747. So we could uh, go ahead and just dig right into all these circuits and start checking everything. As you can see here, this is our receiver antenna port. And it comes in as a uh, RF choke, but it goes into this uh, pilot lamp. And the pilot lamp is to uh, protect the front end of the uh, radio. Now Yezu used this in a lot of their radios. If you remember in our FT-101 series, we actually have one that's on the outside of the radio. The 747 is located inside. But we come on through here and we go through our receiver relay. And we'll follow right on down. And we'll come in and we'll go through our different... Um, filter boards and right on over and into the front end of our receiver so first thing we'll do we're going to look at TO3, 4 and 5 and uh, the reason I want to do that because I have seen these go way out of whack in these radios you got to remember this radio is over 20 years old now but I have seen these three receiver cores go out also you know another problem could be the uh, relay. But we'll go ahead and check the alignment of these uh, three cores to start with and see if that makes any difference. So looking here in our radio, this is the front facing to us. If you look over here right beside the PA compartment. If you look right down here you'll see the three main receiver cores. It's TO3, 4 and 5. And we're going to inject a single and give them a little tune up and uh, see how they work now I don't suggest using anything metallic in these three tuning coils also I would not suggest using a ceramic type tuner because these things will break easily now like unlike other radios these are not glued in but still they're they're pretty tight so I would use a plastic tip to tune those with. Now my favorite tuning stick to use on these small slugs is taking an old ink pen. And if you search around you can find one that a toothpick will slide up in. And all you do is just sand down the point of it to get what you want to fit the slug. And this toothpick will give before the coil breaks. And um, you can just keep sanding it down and pulling it out and sanding it down. And two, it's no longer enough there left and pop a new toothpick in. Keep right on getting it. Again, those are the three coils that we're going to uh, be adjusting. Okay, we're going to turn the volume up just a little bit. I'm going to go to uh, TO3. Pick that one out. TO4. There we go. As you can see we still we brought it up quite a bit from where it originally was. But as you can see, we should be at uh, minus 70. 3 dBm and we should have an S9 and we're at minus 60 dBm and we have about an S4 
so that means the uh, it's it looks to me like the the front end of the receiver from uh, T03 to T05 is working that means that the RF amps are not blown if we're able to adjust them then we know it's something got to be ahead of the uh, receiver that is causing the issue so you know if we're able to come in here and we can adjust T303 4 and 5 and get gain out of that stage that means that the front end transistors are working and there's no problem in this area so we're going to have to backtrack and see what's going on and since we went to the further stage to find out what was happening so and that's how I like to do it I like to just go on to the further stage and check and we're gonna go right on back and right up here and come to the beginning of the stage and the first thing after the uh, antenna port is this uh, lamp this protection lamp so what we're going to do now is uh, come down here to our lamp I zoom in on it you can see it's test point one and test point two and we're going to ohm across those two terminals and see what we can get now back off here's your antenna port coming in right here that feeds the receiver board We should get a low ohm reading here. And you can see we're showing an open circuit. So that little bulb sitting right down in there is toast. This is FO1. It is no good. Now, several things can cause that bulb to go out. Um, a direct lightning hit, uh, a static crack, you know, flash from lightning, or someone that was very close and keyed up something high power that got into the front end and took this bulb out. Alright, I got the old bulb removed. And if I zoom in on it a little bit, you can see it has a black color to it. So that tells me it's probably took a flash of some type and it's popped out this protection bulb. And here we have the new bulb installed and we're ready to test our radio and see what we get. So everything's set just like it was. We had, on the difference is I have the uh, generator on minus 73 dBm. Um, volume controls identical frequencies identical so we'll turn the radio on and see what the meter does now, as you can see the volume went way loud on us and looking here at our S meter you can see that we are at S9 Well, I got the radio on AM. We're down on the uh, AM band, and the radio is receiving fine on AM. But when I go to a single sideband station, like it sounds like you know it almost sounds like you're on AM listening but we're definitely on uh, we're on lower side band 40 meters so we're gonna have to get in here and give a good inspection of the inside of this radio because you know the thing was just shipped and you know bouncing around something could have come loose or 
you know, uh, worst case scenario, whatever went into it could have been lightning. Went into it, took out the bub, but before it did, it took out something in the filtering section. But before we go worrying about that, we're just going to look around inside and see if we see anything. So I've spent the last 10 minutes or so just scanning around, checking connectors, and uh, looking at different things to see if anything comes up, and something caught my eye. Turn the radio so y'all can see it better. Right there, there's a coaxial port with nothing in it. And if we look right here, there's a piece of coax not plugged into anything. It's just in there flapping around in the breeze. Oh, we can tell the difference right then on the receiver. So now let's see if we can tune in a single side band station. The bands are really terrible today too and it's very noisy here also. Very weak station back there. And when everything fails, there's always a CW band. And just so you can see about the noise here on the band today, we have an S9 of line noise down on the lower bands. It is really terrible, um, which, you know, it's probably got a lot to do with this storm that's coming through outside also. But I also have a solar farm down the road, and that usually runs about an S3, S4 on some radios. Okay, well, I checked on my Kenwood TS2000 and the 745, and both of them are showing terrible conditions today, so radio checks out fine. Um, you know, biggest culprit was the little bulb had blowed, and uh, we can only imagine, you know, what caused that to happen. And a coax connector jumped out, probably in transport all the way from Ohio. But anyway, I think Tom will enjoy this radio again, and, uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's not that hard to go in and find the trouble of a radio. You know, you just got to look at the circuit and go in and see if you can find the uh, culprit that's causing the problem. As you see, this time this was a very simple problem, and just knowing where to go in and look. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the replay. If uh, you did, you know, give me a big old thumbs up. like to hear your comments down below, and we'll catch you next time.